students, I am Mr. Lai. In this video, I shall talk about the questions of molecular genetics. By doing the questions, we have to recall the concept of transcription and translation, and the effect of mutation on protein synthesis. Like before, we have MC questions and long questions. In question 4, a mRNA codon table is given. The question asks for the coding strand DNA. I shall show you two ways for doing this question. But before I show you, we can eliminate the options C and D. Since we are looking forward to the DNA strand, there should no be the base uracil. There should be no U, so they are wrong. The first way is to follow the three steps shown here. Step 1, we need to identify the codon in mRNA based on the amino acid sequence given. Step 2, by using the mRNA, you can construct the DNA template strand based on the complementary base pairing. A pairs with the T, G pairs with the C, and U pairs with the A, and so on. Step 3. Also the complementary base pair concept. You can construct the coding DNA strand finally, so you can reach the answer. And the second way is the direct way. If you are familiar with the relationship among mRNA, DNA template strand, and DNA coding strand, you realize that mRNA base sequence are same as the coding strand sequence, except T is replaced by U. Therefore, you can pick up the correct answer is A. In question 5, it asks about the gene mutation. Two mRNA strands are given. One is transcribed from the normal allele, and the other from the mutated allele. We call the long overlapping feature of codon. The trilab codes are read separately. So what you need to do is to separate all the codons first. Especially if you are not that familiar with the question. Then you need to locate the mutation. As we see, the fourth codon is changed from CUA to GUA. So which type of gene, gene mutation is shown in this question? Is it deletion, substitution, addition, and inversion. Leave your answer in the comment for the price. You can refer to the codon table given and find the new amino acid code. Therefore, options A and B are eliminated because the amino acid involved should be the valine and leucine. What I would like to remind you is that please read the questions carefully. It's asking about which amino acid is absent in the protein translated from the mutated allele. So, Actually, uh, the answer should be losing. In question 6, you need to find out which karyotype belongs to a boy with chromosome abnormality. Options A and D are eliminated because they belong to girls who have two X chromosomes. Options B and C show that XY chromosome, so they should belong to boys. However, only option B is correct, since there are three 21st chromosomes. So can you tell me which genetic disease is he suffering? Leave your answer in the comment for the price. In question 8, as we learned in the basic genetics, the gene is responsible for giving instruction for protein synthesis. Then the protein can be used to produce enzyme to control metabolic activities. That's why you need to recall the role of genes in inheritance. Then different amino acid sequence will need to different protein structures. In chapter 27, we learned that the central dogma, in said simple word, it is talking about the mRNA synthesis from DNA by transcription, and protein synthesis from mRNA by translation. Therefore, we realize that the change in protein structure should be caused by the change in DNA or chromosome. That means the mutation. So, options C and D are wrong. For options A and B, both of them start with S, mutation, and N with R, change in cell activity. That means the metabolic activity. The only difference is the order of P and Q. So, should it be the change in protein structure and then the amino acid sequence? Or the amino acid sequence changes and then the protein structure changes? You can recall the concept of translation. In translation, the amino acid molecules are added up one by one to become a polypeptide chain, that means a protein chain. Therefore, we line up the amino acid in a certain sequence first. And when the ribosome reaches the stop codon, 
the protein chain will be released to flow to fold or to coil into a certain structure level. So that's why answer A is also eliminated. For question 13, it's talking about the genetic disease called Gaucher disease. It's talking about the mutation and the enzyme activity. Therefore, remember to do revision cross chapters. The question is talking about the non-functional enzyme cannot help us to break down lipase. Therefore, the lipid will accumulate in our body and affect our health. So, why are the enzymes non-functional? According to the diagram, you can easily get the idea. Take a look at the active site and recall the importance of the active site in the enzyme. What does the active site bind to and speed up the metabolic activity? This answer framework is given in order to help you to construct your answer. Part B asks us to describe how the gene mutation leads to the production of non-functional enzyme. Just like previous question, we call the central dogma first. In the DNA, what sequence is determining that uh, the other sequence in the protein? Okay, so you need you need to know that in the DNA which sequence to determine the uh, what sequence in the protein. Then relate the different level of protein chain to their different function. This diagram shows that the protein conformation or the protein structure can be categorized into four levels. Primary level, the linear form. Secondary level, the coiled form or the folded form. Tertiary level, the three-dimensional form. And the quaternary level is few protein molecules they bind together to do the function normally. Those levels depends on how the polypeptide chain fold and combine with each other. In question 14, part A1, the sugar present in the RNA should be the ribose. Part 2, the base found in the mRNA are A, U, C, G. So which one is missing in the diagram? But remember to write the full name of the base, but not just the letter A, U, C, G. Don't be lazy. Part 3. Where does the mRNA appear in the cell? You can refer to the diagram shown here. Question 14, Part B. Part 1. You need to recall the complementary base pairing concept. It can help you to deal with the question easily. The only thing I want to remind you is that the DNA strand only contains A, T, C, G, but never U. Of course, please write down the full name of the base, but not just the letter. Don't be lazy. Part 2. For building the mRNA, it's a kind of biochemical reaction, the transcription. Of course, we need the DNA templates, we need the free RNA nucleotides as the substrates. However, we also need another molecule to speed up the reaction. Of course, you must be able to recall that it's enzyme. But please tell me the name of the enzyme involved in the transcription. In part 3, you have to recall the role played by the mRNA in the protein synthesis. So please recall the concept of translation. Any molecules are involved in the translation. And any of the molecules, they are related to the mRNA as well. So in this slide, I would like to talk about the answers for part 3. Uh, that means the role played by the mRNA or any related feature of mRNA for uh, making the protein. So the first one, mRNA is constructed by using the DNA as the template. mRNA carries the genetic code from the nucleus to the ribosome. The anticodon of the tRNA bind to the codon on the mRNA for translate because the transfer RNA, one hand, they are the anticodon. On the other hand, they contain the corresponding amino acid. Complementary base pairing occur between mRNA and tRNA. That means the codon and the anticodon pair. And the last part is the base sequence of the mRNA determines the amino acid sequence of the protein. In question 16, it is an alternative codon table. It's a bit different from the codon table given in the book. In the book, it is an mRNA codon table. In this question, it's the DNA codon table. So you will never find uracid, U, in the table. Part A. By using the table, I think it's not that difficult to find the different codes for the same amino acid. This question shows you that 
the genetic code is degenerate. Some codes they code for the same amino acid. Part B, translate the DNA code into the polypeptide chain. You don't need to convert the code into mRNA and then uh, uh, use the mRNA code on to cook the protein. You can use this DNA code on table directly. The only thing I would like to remind you is that to translate the code on separately. That means the trilab code. Okay, translate that separately. In part C, it's about the gene mutation. Okay, when doing this question, remember to compare the code on carefully. The simple steps are point out any difference resulted from the mutation, what is the amino acid change in the sequence, and then it will change the conformation of what. So okay, remember that we call what is the product. Read the question carefully, you will know what conformation is changed. Part D, we talk about the enzyme again. Since the amino acid sequence is changed, it will affect the conformation of what? The product okay, of translation. Then, what molecules cannot bind to the MSI core this diagram we talked about in previous slides? This slide is to compare the DNA codons and the mRNA codons for you. Actually, you can find that the DNA codons for methylene is ATG, and the mRNA codon is AUG. Any difference or similarity? In fact, they are the same, except the T is replaced by U. It helps you to realize the relationship between the mRNA strand and the coding strand. Any question, please feel free to leave it below. I shall answer you as soon as possible. See you next time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.